Good day, this is the Professor, CBMD PhD, and today is Monday, April 17th, 2023. It is 403 and 13 seconds, a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and today's research, broccoli. So let's hop to it here. As broccoli consumption protects gut lining, reduces disease, and mites, researchers discover that a certain molecule and promptly interacts with the receptor and mice to promote gut health. Date April 6, 2023. Source, Penn State. As broccoli is known to be beneficial to our health, for example, research has shown that increased consumption of the cruciferous vegetable decreases incidence of cancer and type 2 diabetes. In a recent study, researchers found that broccoli contains certain molecules that bind to a receptor within mites and help to protect the lining of the small intestine, thereby inhibiting the development of disease. The findings lend support to the idea that broccoli truly is a superfood. We all know that broccoli is good for us, but why? What happens in the body when we eat broccoli? The research is helping to uncover the mechanisms for how broccoli and other foods benefit health and mice and likely humans as well. It provides strong evidence that cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts should be part of a normal healthy diet. The wall of the small intestine allows beneficial water and nutrients to pass into the body but prevents food particles and bacteria that could cause harm. As certain cells that line the intestine including enterocytes, which absorb water and nutrients, goblin cells, which secrete a protective layer of mucus on the intestinal wall, and pinna cells, which secrete lysosomes that contain digestive enzymes, help to modulate this activity and keep a healthy balance. The research has found that molecules in broccoli called aerohydrocarbon receptor ligands bind to aerohydrocarbon receptor, which is a type of protein called a transcription factor. This binding they found initiates a variety of activities that affect the functions of intestinal cells. And to conduct their study, the researchers fed an experimental group of mites, a diet containing 15% broccoli, equivalent to about 3.5 cups per day for humans, and fed a control group of mites, a typical laboratory diet that did not contain broccoli. They then analyzed the animal's tissues to determine the extent to which aerohydrocarbon receptor was activated, as well as the quantities of various cell types and mucus concentrations, among other factors, in the two groups. The team found that mice that were not fed broccoli lacked aerohydrocarbon receptor activity, which resulted in altered intestinal barrier function, reduced transit time of food in the small intestine, Decreased number of goblin cells and protective mucus, decreased pinna cells and lysosome production, and decreased number of enterocyte cells. The gut health of the mice that were non fed broccoli was compromised in a variety of ways that are known to be associated with disease. The research suggests that broccoli and likely other foods can be used as natural sources of aerial hydrocarbon receptor ligands and then diets rich. And these ligands contribute to resilience of the small intestine. The research data suggests that dietary cues relating to the activity of aerohydrocarbon receptor can reshape the cellular and metabolic repertoire of the gastrointestinal tract. And this is a professor, professor of microbiology, bioinformatics, pathophysiology, and leader of research. This video was created. For educational purposes only. Hope you enjoyed listening. Until next time, have a great day.